and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on. For some Gruul Proliferate, we have a Grum Gully the Generous deck. That's right, we built around Grum Gully here. So Grum Gully the Generous is a <clears throat> Gruul creature, 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. All right, so if we have Grum Gully in play, all of our uh, creatures enter with 1-1 one, one counters. And so we're going to really just push that 1-1 one, one counter theme a ton here. So we got uh, Pell Collector and Bark Hide Troll that, that get 1-1 one, one counters. Bark Hide Troll just starts with one. Pell Collector gets them as whenever you have other creatures enter or leave the battlefield that are bigger than it. We have Wildborn Preserver, which is a creature that you can put 1-1 one, one counters on whenever you play others, other creatures and pay mana. And so we got we got these other creatures with, with plus one plus one counters. We also got the four Vivians, which put one one counters on all of our creatures. We have the Domri's ambush put one one counter on our creatures. Nissa makes lands with one one counters. So if we got all this counter stuff, we're gonna try Evolution Sage. That's right. We got four Evolution Sages in here. So whenever we play a land, we get to proliferate. So you know, uh, add an additional counter to all these creatures with plus one plus one counters. We'll see if this works. This could be this could be pretty uh, this could be work pretty well. Maybe it won't work. Who knows? But we're gonna try it. Um, we got Grum Gully could be like our turn three play. Then turn four we could play Evolution Sage and then put a counter on it. Then play a land and it gets another counter and then you just have a three mana five four. So that's pretty cool. They can continue to grow because we care about um, having lands enter the battlefield to be able to proliferate, we got four Fabled Passages in here. So if that fourth land was a Fabled Passage, we get the trigger for Fabled Passage, plus then we fetch and we get another trigger whenever we put our other land into play. So we can get multiple Evolution Sage triggers with the Fabled Passages. Um, and then, uh, you know, if we have multiple Evolution Sages, it can, it can get pretty crazy. So the, yeah, so like we're going to be making, hopefully... Some large creatures with a bunch of 1-1 counters on them and stuff. But they don't... That's not necessarily game-winning. Like, Pelt Collector will have Trample as long as it has three or more counters. But these other creatures don't have uh, Trample. So, we have the Vivian being able to give our creatures Trample, like, whenever they're going to be large creatures. So, that's kind of the, our game plan. Make large creatures, give them Trample, attack, win. Um, some backup cards. We have Questing Beast is just unbelievable. Like this card is just, you know, it should be in our aggro deck, giving counters to Questing Beast. And, um, you yeah, know, like going turn three Grum Gully, turn four Questing Beast. Now it's a 5-5 five five, because, uh, you know, it gets that extra counter on it. So, you know, Questing Beast is a 5-5 five five is awesome. And, you know, just making it bigger with the help of Evolution Sage and Vivian and Domri's Ambush is even more devastating. And then, of course, as we talked about, Nissa can keep on just keep on the keep the threats coming with more three threes, and same with the Great Henge can keep the threats coming. Each creature we get to draw an extra card, and so sometimes like drawing the extra cards is kind of important here too because sometimes you just draw like another land, and you're like, oh, I kind of wish we drew a creature. Well, drawing extra lands is, is good in this deck too because of Evolution Sage being able to play those extra lands for value with the Proliferate also. Um, proliferating. Remember, also adds counters to the Planeswalker, so you know maybe we get to ultimate Nissa um, faster because of the proliferating. And also, when when you do ultimate Nissa, if you have an Evolution Sage in play, it's just insane because the minus eight you can go put you know like eight forests into play, and then you get eight proliferate triggers for like all of your your lands that are now indestructible or just going to be that much bigger and everything like that. So this could be. Um, this could be pretty, pretty sweet. So hopefully this all works out. Um, Sideboard-wise, we don't have like a lot of great stuff over here. Pretty narrow, but you know, it's like new format. So we have, um, you know, for Veil of Summer, obviously, it's just the best sideboard card in the format. Cindervines, because there's a lot of enchantments between like Fires of Invention, Doom, Foretold. Um, can also destroy uh, Lucky Clover and things like that. I got Spyglass here mostly for Oko, because I think Oko is like a card that could be really difficult for us to deal with. So like the, the Oko decks, I want to try Spyglassing Oko, and so they don't get to turn our creatures into just 3-3s three with no abilities and stuff like that. Flame Sweep for aggro could also be used against um, 
zombie tokens if we want, and then Ceratops for another haste threat. Let's go. So with our donation decks, what we're going to do is we play a league with these decks. We're going to play until we win a five or lose two. We're going to pay our 1,000 gold here and see how we do. All right, so Gruel Proliferate. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of other good options that we could have played, but, you know, I cut it down to these. But yeah, Growth Chamber Guardian is definitely a reasonable two drop. I just kind of like Wildborn Preserver more. Um, and then, <clears throat> especially with Wildborn Preserver with, with Vivian. Especially with Vivian, you know, because you can make a very large Wildborn Preserver pretty easily. Um, there's a lot of other good three drops. You know, like Gruul Spellbreaker would fit here. You know, Gruul Spellbreaker gets a counter. <clears throat> Even having something like... Honestly, a card like um, Cranko. Cranko would work pretty well here because um, because Grum Goalie puts a counter on Cranko right away. And so getting more counters is really nice. <laughs> I like it. Opponent's going aggro over here. Aggro land destruction. Ah, uh, that was kind of my plan. Um, I hope my opponent plays a creature here that I get to ambush and then play my land and then double proliferate, make it a lot easier to play this great henge. Ah, it's an adventure deck. <laughs> I get it. They're playing Golgari Mill. They're thinning my deck out. So close to playing this Great Henge. Wow. I just said no blocks. Just no blocks. They're like, I can't really think of a block that that would help me here. I'm going to take it. So Golgari Adventures. This, these cards don't really seem like they do stuff too much stuff against Golgari Adventures. I mean, I could play this for Lucky Clover. Eh, let's just play our creatures and attack. Let's just play our creatures and attack. We got a couple of proliferate triggers. So our deck's doing its namesake thing. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. Oh, I guess you have Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer probably would be worth it. Yeah, Veil for, you know, they have, I'm sure they have Rider, and then we saw them have Legion's End and Trophy. Yeah, Veil of Summer would have been worth it. What do we lose to with Fires? Um, we we started 0-2 and, and then changed some stuff with the deck, and then went 3-0 afterwards. Um, most notably adding in an additional land that helped. But we lost to, like, Green-White aggro where 
we had game one locked up, but my opponent had to draw their third and fourth March of the Multitudes to finish the game, like, back-to-back. -back. And they did. Even if we just had one one additional turn before they drew both of those, those cards back-to-back, -back, they just drew, you know, like, the third one, then a random spell, then the fourth one. I think we would have won. Yep, playing Pelt Collector. All right, so we got 25 lands in the stack. And we're still going to mulligan, though. All right, keep. And here we go. And then we lost to um, a... A Field of the Dead deck. Lost a Field of the Dead. Because of Agent of Treachery. They played four Agent of Treacheries and stole a bunch of stuff. And I was sad. Elf Archer. So now we can play the troll, put a counter on the preserver. We can get two three threes. I guess not. So I'd like to wait on the Fabled Passage. If we draw Evolution Sage, we can turn Bark High Troll into a 5-5. Five five. But with that being said, all we've done is just drawn lands the whole time. And, and I put a Nissa down to the bottom with our Scry. And so we could just take a land out of the deck and shuffle that Nissa back. So we'll see what... I'm basically saving it one more turn. There's a good chance I'm playing the Fabled Passage and doing that this next turn. Cool, got a two for one. All right, yeah, let's let's just shuffle this Nissa back. Yep, yeah, my opponent for, forgot about the death touch. Yeah, that was that was not a good dis disfigure. But doesn't matter too much. They have a bunch of spells, I have a bunch of lands, and so looks like they're still gonna win. Doesn't matter when I got nothing going on over here. So we want to keep lands in hand for our evolution sage. I'm just I'm gonna I'm playing the stomping ground there because we have um, the great henge, which would cost six mana with having a three three in play. Is that right? It usually costs nine. Hey, 
And maybe that was that Nissa. <laughs> yeah, Oko is so good. Yeah, I've, whenever I do play a, gr a blue green Oko deck, I do really well. That that card is very strong. All right, let's try not to flood out that much. If we play Veil of Summers, what am I cutting? So we trim one, one Sage, one Troll. One Pelt Collector. Hmm. I think ambush is important. Killing stuff. I don't think I cut an ambush. I'm. I'm let's see. I trim those. I don't really want to take out a land. Just because we drew tons of lands there doesn't mean that that's going to happen again. <laughs> You're giving the deck a little haircut. No, I, I think Veil vale is just too good of a card to play three of. You know, it gets it, you know they have we've seen tons of removal from them. We've seen four different removal spells. I think it's too good to be playing three of. I guess it's a Grum Gully. So you know, counter spell draw a card for one mana is just too valuable. To not play all four. Well, this is really sad. Two games in a row here. I mean, we may we may draw well, you know. You never know. Maybe we'll just draw some spells this time. This is kind of this is what happened like last game. We didn't have lands, Mulligan, just to have a bunch of lands. The last game, last game we only had three lands in our opener, but then our first like four draw steps were all lands. Maybe we'll draw spells this time. I never get that many lands in my ramp deck, even though I want them. This sleeve was from TwitchCon.
Yeah, my opponent's probably newer, newer player, kind of learning their cards and everything. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's either don't play the land because we could draw Evolution Sage, then play land and proliferate all this stuff, or play land to, to start to keep playing lands each turn. Like if we if we top deck land, keep going towards the Great Henge. And we have the Great Henge in hand, and there's only three Evolution Sages in our deck. So we're going this route. All right, well, that just trumps everything I have. Yay. We haven't drawn our mo our best card in our deck, Vivian Arcbow Ranger. I haven't drawn that in any of the three games. That is definitely our best card. So yeah, like my my opponent should like wait for me to double block and then do that, of course. Because I was I was actually planning on double blocking. I can't... Yes, I mean, this Great Henge costs six mana. That's my fifth mana source. So I, I need another land for the Great Henge. So I can't really double block because I want to get this Great Henge in play. Maybe my opponent only attacks with the flyer. Yeah. Now we get to play Henge. Draw a two drop. Okay, not quite. Nope, that knight cannot block it. Oh, that's true. Questing be or that's true. Yeah, the Pell Collector was going to be growing to be four. Anyway, if the beast died, good call. Good call. We'll see if they choose the right creature. You can choose the Questing Beast or choose something else. Ah, oh, dang, they figured it out. All right, can the Preserver get us there? Surprise. No, <laughs> they had to disfigure. Uh, punished. 
for not just playing on my turn and turning it into a 3-3 and drawing a card. All right, I want to do the Great Henge trigger first so we can draw our card, so we, see what we got. All right, so we know we can just use all of our mana here. I mean, I could save a mana for the Bark Hide Troll, but still. Yeah. Okay. So we got there. I played into Disfigure by waiting. But I did play I played around the Legion's End, but I played into Disfigure. So, you know. Oh yeah, I know. We got I know if we ever draw Vivian, we get Questing Beast Vivian for that Death Touch Trample. So should we get more more counters on it and proliferate. That is true. If I and if I would have played the land, I could have played the second preserver. All right. Want to know? I like it. I like it. No more lands, though. Is it EDT now? I just want to say Eastern, but there's not... There's not an abbreviation for Eastern. Is there? But yeah, we're starting at noon Eastern time tomorrow. Noon Eastern. Does that look better than EDT? Does that look better? Flash deck. Grumgully the Generous. This is why it's a lot. This is why best of three, or sorry, uh, Flash struggles a lot more in best of three. Because even though they're likely going to win this, we're going to have Veil of Summer. You know, four Veil of Summer, three. Shifting Ceratops in our sideboard should be able to help us out. What are all these lands doing? Oh yeah, it's it's all right, Matthew. It's all right. We'll just do it. We'll just do it then. It's all good. Um. We'll still. Yeah, I'm. I'm still just gonna start at the normal time. No more quench. The EDT stands for like the daylight time, so it's like it's it's like whether it's like the the daylight savings time. Like there's like the difference. Some some part of the year it's EDT, other parts EST. Yeah, for the daylight savings time.
So, yep. This card plays around Quench still. But yeah, we're going to be losing this. All right. We don't really want nine lands. Don't think we get helped out too much by nine having nine lands. Um, we're going to take out the Great Henge. Like, the Great Henge is amazing if it's in play, but it's just going to be too difficult to have in play, in my opinion. And is Nissa not that good? I'm going to cut one of each of the three drops, just because they cost three. Maybe I should just cut two Bark High Trolls. And yeah, I cut a land. With us lowering this curve. I don't have any opinion on what, this, what the strongest deck in the format is so far. I don't... I don't know. I think it's too early for that. Say it. Uh, Oko looks certainly looks like the real deal, and I've had a lot of success every time playing an, an Oko deck. I don't think they're going to have a one-mana creature counter. Um, adventure, yeah, the adventure decks are pretty impressive. They can go really long. The what's really impressive about it is uh the the seven mana giant, the, the beanstalk giant. That card has looked awesome. Especially with Loki Lucky Clover. Yeah, I know Sage would have been really good to draw or just, you know, anything. And good to have a Ceratops. I'm glad we cut a land at least. Um So this does set up like a good frilled mystic for them, but if they play frilled mystic then we get to ambush it and they're dead. They kind of need to counter this and have some stuff for these things. Because you know, like this Bark Hide Troll can add a bunch of counters to everything. So there we go. We're going to game three. I could say no.
They can take those six cards with them. All right, here we go. We didn't even, you know, won that game. We didn't draw any Veil of Summers or Ceratops. Yeah, the yeah the Esper deck is is pretty popular. That's one of the most popular decks, um, Esper Doom. We're gonna be playing that tomorrow in our in our twelve hour stream. We've had a lot of people ask for me to play the deck, so we're we're doing that one tomorrow. Uh, this is just too expensive of a curve on the draw, right? Like we don't. Don't put any pressure down early. I do really like Grumgully then Ceratops, like making Ceratops a 6-5. So their wolf doesn't even trade with Ceratops, but it's Grumgully's probably not resolving though, right? Hmm. I don't think I mulligan, even though it's you know, it's not ideal. I don't think we mulligan. All right, I'm just going to try to get land out of my deck. There's only 20 land left. Um, no, there's only 19. This will make it 18. So there's only 18 lands left. I don't think Bronze. Yeah, the dance decks are definitely something to be respected, but I don't think Brontodon is a, the best cyborg card because you know they're they're trying to bring back all of their, um, all of their, uh, their stuff. Hey Omaha, I think a, a better cyborg card is like Ashiok. Dance with the Mance. The decks that are playing a bunch of eggs and trying to bring them back from their graveyard. My opponent's very confident.
I think Fires is good. I don't, I don't know if it's like, I don't think it was like Wilderness Reclamation good. Um, but yeah, I, I think Fires is is a good card. Um, you know, it does it does force you to, or, you know, it does really reward you for building a a very clunky deck. So if you are playing any games where you don't have uh, fires in play, it can be pretty awkward. Yep, they were right. Their hand was loaded. Especially against my slower hand, that was pretty perfect. Problem is I can only single spell here. No, either gust doesn't counter the spell. It just takes it takes the spell that's on the stack and um, then just places it either on the top or bottom of your library you get to choose, but it doesn't counter it. All right, so we're one and one. Thought about that hand for a while. Yeah, you know, my my inclination was kind of to mulligan that. But that's definitely how we could lose with you know multiple ether gusts and and uh, night pack ambusher there and with the early two drop for the pressure. That was unfortunate. So <clears throat> we didn't see any Veil of Summers, but Veil of Summer doesn't protect against Ether Gust anyway. Looks like we're playing against Simic Flash again. I didn't want to trade with that thing. I wouldn't mind trading with the 2 1. But didn't want to trade with that thing. They're down to three cards, though.
It's not ideal. They drew that fourth land. So blocking the Wildborn Preserver, oh man, would not have forced my opponent to tap out. It would have just played the Sailor. <laughs> there you go, Plumber. Nice. Killing the Sailor so they don't get to just keep drawing cards. Come on. I I don't know what Demir Tempo is. Don't really have any thoughts on it. I don't I don't know what that is. Like what what's in Demir Tempo? My opponent's drawn very well. No, I mean, I, I mean that could be a, the right name. I don't... Just because somebody else made a Demir Tempo deck doesn't mean that I've seen it or, or know what what would be in the deck or anything like that. I just I don't know what that looks like. All right. And then we're cutting a land. What land did we cut last time? Highlands? I think we cut a Highlands. All right, well, we lost game one last time as well. And then we won game two and lost game three. This hand is horrible. I mean, Pelk, Terminal Pelk Collector is awesome. The rest of it.
no, Cinder Vines. That our opponent's deck is more creatures than spells. Still drawn zero Veil of Summers. You know, our, our best card in this matchup we've drawn zero of in the three sideboard games that we've played, including mulligans and everything, we've seen zero of them. The counter fairies. You're talking about these things. This card is this card's amazing. If you're, if, you're, if you're asking if this card is good, it's very very good. When you when something does get through, you get to bounce it. It's very good. Um, I'd probably be Green White Company in Modern there, Rad the Reptile. Well, three draw steps, three lands. Even though we boarded out a land and we fetched. We're still three for three on lands. The fairy that has counterspell adventure. Okay, yeah, no, that that's too expensive for the counterspell adventure. Hypnotic sprite. Yeah. Yeah, green white value town. Welcome to the Oko. <laughs> Thanks, Hole in the Earth. Thank you so much. Glad to have you here. Didn't I put that at the bottom? I did. They could they could crack the food token and stay alive. All right, so that's why Wildborn Preserve is good. Get to play it at end step. They don't want to tap out, so it resolves. Then you play a one drop, and they're like, I don't think I want to counter the one drop. And then you're like, all right, well, I'll just put five counters on Preserver. And then. All right. We... This is about to go to our fourth game. We have four Veil of Summers. We still haven't seen one, even through mulligans and everything. Can we find some Veil of Summers here? We're probably going to draw like three of them now. 
Dang. Maybe not. So do I mulligan? So far, all we do is draw land, so we might as well keep a keep a hand with all spells. So all we've been doing in these these games are drawing lands. That sounds like a good idea. could try to surprise the Spectral Sailor, you know, with the block. But I'd rather just resolve my creature when I can. Alright, Evolution Sage getting sabotaged. Out of the land, I want the land. I draw land. Oh, that was the worst draw. Ugh, that was bad. What's up, Warheart? Ugh. Why did I mulligan? Thank you so much for the resub. I really appreciate that. And that's, oh, that's number 15 of the day. According to MTG bot, I'm one behind. There. Um, yeah, I mean, this is my only play. Ambush doesn't make any sense when we know that they have the bounce spell. Not gonna attack into a wolf. Please no wolf. Please no wolf. Darn it. That's why I would have loved to hit the four the four mana here to jam like these four drops that they really want to counter so they don't get to just play a wolf. But now they have the wolf in play before they have to counter stuff. That hurts quite a bit. That's probably game. We need that fourth land drop. Should have mulliganed. We were on a four-card hand there. We had three cards that didn't matter at all. 
Never played them. Should have mulliganed. Well, that's really, it's really unfortunate. We just played against two Simic Flash decks. You know, like those are our two losses. Just Simic Flash back to back. Drew zero Veil of Summers. I, I didn't have Veil of Summer in my opener there. I should have mulliganed. We had mulligan just a bunch. I don't know. I just wanted it to work out, but it didn't. Um. Yeah, just didn't work out. Unfortunately, we didn't get to because of that. You know, like we didn't get to really curve out. You know, we didn't get to do our thing. Um, that's that's what Simic Flash does. Is it keeps your deck from it stops your deck from doing its cool stuff. So we didn't get to ever, um, you know, be able to play Grum Goalie and then play another creature. We actually never did that in in the entire league. So that's really sad. Yeah, this Grum Goalie deck and never had it in play and then had another creature like. There is a time against Simic Flash, like our very first game, I think, where we had it and, you know, we played it, but we just had all sorts of lands and they just bounced Grum Goalie and I had like one creature, they countered like one questing beast and they countered it and I had nothing else kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, there we go. So that's Gruel Proliferate. Disappointing leak, but... Um, you know, that happens. That's magic. But I like the deck, though. I like Grum Gully. I, I need to mulligan that game three hand. And I also need to draw better. I didn't do either of those. So there we go. If you're watching later on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, though. And please leave some comments as well. Let me know what you think of Grum Gully. What are you, if, you're, if you're playing a Grum Gully deck, uh, let me know how you're using this generous goblin shaman here as well as um if you're playing the deck also if you're trying this deck out let me know how it's going for you how it's working out for you there but thank you so much for watching some gruel proliferate and i'll see you for the next video